The Awkward Apocalypse by Zimbabwe Joe. B R R O. Elemental P. Q R S. T U V. Bringing to life the principles of Cubist prosody to disseminate democratic community. I am a refugee, a sojourner, an unexpected waif on the passage through the mountains. I know neither how nor why I have arrived. I am an unwanted child. I am the mother who loves her child so much that she would give anything to support it. I am the idealist child, believing impossible dreams about a world filled with love. I am the idealist child, suddenly faced with giving up impossible dreams to come under a yoke that will support my unexpected pregnancy. I am a refugee. I come from a foreign country in the future. I come from beyond Babylon. I come from a, come with a message of love. In the future, there are no confused tongues, for we all speak with love. I have come to speak for the unwanted child. Canarchy girl looked up from her table at the radio on the shelf, muttering news between jazz sets. It was transmitting the words of a speech being given that all programming had been interrupted for. Impossible words. They couldn't actually mean what they implied. I am a refugee, a pilgrim. I am one lover awaiting the return of another. On this narrow passage in the highlands, there are voices in the wind. I am lonely. I cry out with them. We are alone together. This is where community begins. Canarchy girl put down her pencil, frozen in her hand. She had been idling the morning out, redesigning her logo. It was a sign of the times. The Canarchy girl tattoo on her belly and the stars on her breasts had all stretched during her pregnancy. I am the result of an intention. I am the response to a call for help. I am love, returned through eternity to honor my mother. She looked at the paper at the doodles and diversions there. Her attempts to reflect the changes on her body art had trailed off into geometric progressions and poetic whimsy. She read it again. Little baby that I love, help me be the best mommy that I can. Find some way when you grow up. Come back and help me when you're a man. She sat back breathless. The voice on the radio had spoken those very words aloud as she read them on the page. I am the child of Elementopy QRSTUV. Away, put your weapons. I mean you no harm. The voice stopped, and another sprang to life. The clipped contralto of a loved London based reporter. We are coming to you live from the floor of the UN General Assembly. A special vote today on the Middle East crisis was interrupted by flashes of light and peals of incredible thunder. I know this sounds strange, but I saw it with my own two eyes. The ceiling sort of became translucent. It was as if another direction had been added to the normal. Or rather, I suddenly saw what I had always seen and ignored. And there he was. And well, here he is. <laughs> he is standing there. It seems that I am the only one in the room capable of speech. She paused and audibly taking in and holding a breath. Well, Hare Krishna, okay, he is looking right at me now. He is smiling. I really don't. The air just hung. Elemena PQRSTUV, known in activist circles as Canarchy Girl, realized then that she was holding her own breath. She looked down at her stomach. Are you there in my belly? She thought. The phone rang. Unlike the radio on the shelf, which was older than she was, the phone was a modern marvel. The ringtone, Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, declared the caller to be the father of her unborn child, the one who had left without leaving a trace. The radio garbled back to life. That was Irene Rokowski from the floor of the UN General Assembly. Reports are pouring in uh, from all over the world. All of the guns have disappeared. There are no swords to be found. Suddenly, in a moment, the world has been disarmed, seemingly by this dreadlocked naked man holding silent court in the Great Hall of the UN. 
This morning we teetered on the brink of self-destruction. Have our children come back to save us from ourselves? The phone continued playing as the reporters stumbled aloud through a process of realization which the entire world shared. I am a refugee. I am the lover unexpectedly returning. I have come to celebrate and give thanks for this life with which I have been blessed. I have come to show all of you how this is not only a possibility, but rather the purpose of all possibility. Kanoki girl looked at the phone. I have come to say, answer the call. She laughed and laughing accepted the wild free fall that the universe had just gone into. Okay, she whispered, I love you. I have come to share love with all who will join me. She picked up the phone, cutting off the phrase, As long as I know how to love, I know I'll be all right. Hello, she said flatly. Her reluctance had faded completely, but she could find no joy in her to offer this man, this boy who had promised her forever and left a month later. Baby, what's going on? This wasn't his usual hip greeting. This was a cautious question, covering confusion and doubt. My first name ain't Baby. It's I'm sorry, Miss T.U.B., if you've been naughty, she replied slowly. For a long time, neither said a word. Do you know what's going on? He asked again. Apparently your child has come and chosen to be the father you couldn't. Isn't that sweet? This time the pause in the conversation was filled with the sound of a Cigarette being dragged. He tried a different tone. Okay, so I'm not the best guy in the world. I think something bigger than that is going on here. It's a good thing I'm not at home. Once she had loved him like a fairy tale, cherishing his knowing of her in all her dimensions. Once she had been the center of his attention. The fairy tale had become an unrequited romance and then a typical tragedy. Her idealist, philosopher, singer-songwriter, guitar-playing papa had listened to the scarecrow and eased on down the road. On, and he left her in debt, holding his glass pipe, the sacred chalice of marijuana meditation, he called it. The police now had the pipe, and with it the pieces of paper documenting their continued interactions with her. Most assuredly, they no longer still possessed her dreadlocks, though they had taken them from her, too. Those had been the fruit of twelve years' cultivation. She had thought of them as the roots of her body growing down from the sky to bear fruit on the ground. They had been sheared off by a woman with a billy club and pistol on her belt when a similarly armed lady guard held her down. In the FEMA trailer that she had been given to go live in while serving her probation, she kept no reminders of him. Every last token was absolutely purged. She knew through friends that he knew what had happened. Yet he let six months go by without ever calling. She heard him sob. Oh my God, I'm sorry. She wanted to resist. Every independent, rebellious part of her screamed a command. Reject him! But her curiosity and the hopefulness in her spirit were called out by the sob. I don't deserve. I, I, he stammered. Hush, I believe that you want to be forgiven. This is going to take a while. They have baked me like a brick. One like a multitude of others. They were building a tower to the sky. Be quiet and know that I do not hate you. This is the greatest miracle to occur today. I don't hate you anymore. Um, he started. Hush, she finished. Stay where you are until you are sent for. After she said it and hung up, she considered the dynamics of her conversation. She had come clean at the end with a voice of a clear authority that she had not heard from herself in the time since her troubadour had left. A Cocapelli, as Cocapelli are, of course, want to do. She knew that he would obey. She heard the voice on the radio. You shall have no more hatred, because you have no more resentments. 
You shall have no more resentments because you offer all of your fears up to the higher power of the one and another of your fellows. This simple system shall be your law. All good things shall increase as you follow the law. She had missed the laying down of the law. She alone on earth had missed it. Well, there was also the father. The reporter's voice returned. There you have it. I suspect we all know what we ought to do. The BBC will return to service at an appropriate time. Aloha. The air clicked magnetically as the station went dead and static replaced it. Canarchy girl looked down at her naked belly. The Canarchy symbol, a capital A, made up of three lines with arrows on both ends, making a triangle set inside a circle with the arrows protruding beyond the circumference. Tattooed on her belly had always represented to her an act of surrender to entropy. Order always decays. Now the A was not so distinct. The triangle was now fairly well centered in the circle. It resembled some hieroglyphic sun symbol radiating from the odd little areola-less nipple of the outy belly button popping out from her paradoxical womb. Her phone rang again. This time it was not one of her normally preset ringtones. It was Bob Marley singing Redemption Song. She sat and listened for a moment, stunned, smiling. One good thing about music, she muttered. When it hit, you feel no pain. Flipping the phone open like a space movie prop, she said, Hello? Hi, Mom. What's your name? I don't know. You tell me. Aloha. Mahalo. Okay, so aloha. I want you to tell me what's going on. You asked me to come back. So I did. Okay. Thank you. I love you. Her flesh tingled numbly like a limb fallen asleep as she asked. What do I need to know? You are a member of the Mamocratic Parliament, the governing body of all world affairs. Your term limit naturally cannot last longer than nine and a half months, with a two and a half year parliamentary aid term to follow. That is, pregnant mamas do the voting, nursing mamas draft the legislation, and everybody else receives the benevolent truth of the creative force from which all humanity springs. She asked, um, is that mammocracy as in... As in yes, ma'am, he interrupted. What happens today? She asked. Everyone is going to the hospitals and jails and homeless shelters to bring their fellows out into the world to help them get better. Meanwhile, all the pregnant women and nursing mothers will be provided with ample resources to take their place in the parliament, whichever form they choose for it to take. Don't you already know? No, you will keep the truth from me. The whole world will hide the record of it until I stumble upon it in a library while researching the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten, Horus in the flesh. I will live here long before I am born. I will leave here long before I am born. In the meantime, we will be able to do many important things, but you cannot know the reasons why. I cannot tell you what is to come. By loosely spoken words, all covenants may be undone. I don't really understand. Mother, we shall be alone together for this time, and later you will remember many things I have told you. She smiled, said, Aloha, and hung up. The next moment, her market, her marker was in her hand, and she wrote upon the wall in bold black letters, proclaiming, this is the Babylon Refugee Rescue Operation. I and I are one. We are the same. It is time to speak in one voice all of the healing words of love. In the very fullness of time, we are now progressing to sing songs of life, springtime, and progress, consequences, and consecration. We are awakening now the living prophets of the I Magi nation. The words came to her and through her. It seemed her hand flying across the wall while geometric figures danced in her head. The very spirals and symmetries that made up letters were slipping around her. She found that she was inventing a new art form to deal with these new concepts. Picasso and Shakespeare got mixed up with the Kabbalah, bringing to life the principles of cubist prosetry to disseminate mammocratic community.